Having gained a new identity from its former guise as Bosch Packaging Technology, Sintigen Technology in Germany has been at the forefront of sustainability developments over the past year. We catch up with the business to discuss some of its later systems and how it's approaching making its machinery as environmentally friendly as possible, as well as meeting its customers' needs. As a starting point, can you explain how important sustainability is to the business? Oh, that's a very good question, Neil. Um, I show you our company color. Our company color is green, and um, it's not only the color. Uh, sustainability has been defined as one of the strategic topics um, of our company since we became Syntagon. So there is a big uh, focus from our uh, business leaders, but also from our investors who strongly believe in the virtue of sustainability. Of course, because it's important for the society, but also in commercial terms, because they believe it increases company value. And um, so uh, we are now in double focus funds, um, providing um, equipment and solutions for a better environment, but also increasing business value for Silicon. So uh, can you explain in terms of how the business has adapted from Bosch through to Sintigen in terms of its sustainability policy things? Mm -hmm. In general, um, sustainability has, of course, always also been a key issue for Bosch, why we were Bosch. However, what has changed? Besides being a core topic, besides having a new color, it's also in terms of how we approach um, sustainability. So there's a um, big effort in balancing innovation on one hand side and commercial success on the other. It's also important to develop um, uh, solutions that go to the market and develop solutions which are close to customer needs. So customer focus is something which has dramatically changed under the new name and which is important so we can provide uh, solutions that support our customers' needs not the day after tomorrow but also today. Normally when you approach the sustainability you think in changing materials. You say okay it used to be plastic now let's do this in paper. This is not enough. Uh, when it comes to changing material, you have to go further. You have to um, provide a, um, a holistic solution, looking at the uh, total needs of the customer, starting from their market needs, from their internal targets, from cost perspectives, and of course, uh, up to product protection. So it's a total package which you have to look at. And this is indeed changing. So we as a machine supplier, we are well known in providing hardware equipment. But now we are moving also into consulting and um, servicing. So, and Syntagon as a company is strongly investing into, into these activities, building know-how to provide our customers not only the hardware equipment, but also um, the know-how around this ranging from materials to testing services, up of course to the final solution. And we all call this from idea to shelf. Obviously, this past year has been a tremendously testing one for many businesses, and uh, certainly those in the packaging and processing industry are not exempt from that. So can you explain what you perceive to have been the, the biggest challenges for the business over the past year? Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone has been hard by COVID, and so has Syntagon. However, what can we sum up? There are also some positive side. Packaging has received some appreciation. So package is now also something which comes with cleanliness, with hygienic. So in total, the packaging industry in the long term should benefit uh, from the appreciation of our customers. Has sustainability been hit by COVID? In the beginning, of course, everything has slowed down because uh, companies and brands were busy in fighting COVID and implementing immediate measures. However, um, what we see now is the topic has not disappeared. So it's going to stay. So we believe sustainability indeed uh, is going to stay and um, is uh, still driving um, the industry. Immediate effects, of course, we see because investment decisions are not taken easily. Uh, some companies might want to save the money for uh, mitigating risks of COVID. Uh, some companies just don't meet so often anymore and can take um, investment decisions and others, of course, are hit by the pandemic not selling their products. 
So of course, yes, we see a short-term effect, but in the long run, we see sustainability as going to stay and the ambitions of our companies uh, in the end haven't changed. 2025 is still there and the big targets are still there and need to be met. Uh, in terms of trying to develop new equipment ranges, uh, how technically challenging is it to create machinery that has uh, sustainability as part of its core? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, a, of course, something which we every day uh, ponder about, how to approach this. And there are um, several aspects we want to look at. First of all, we have new materials. What we actually do, we change a running system. Some people say never change a running system, but that's actually what we do. Um, conventional materials have been developed uh, over a range of 50 years, very much optimized to the, to the needs of the product, uh, very much optimized in cost and um, machinability aspects. Now, um, there are these project managers, these sustainability teams, or even owners that need to change materials in a very short period of time. So yes, it's challenging um, because the new materials come with different properties. Look at paper. Paper is a very nice stuff. It's renewable, recyclable, and even compostable. But it naturally doesn't come with a barrier. It's not sealable. It's easy, it easily tears. It has a high insulation effect to heat. So all these properties have to be overcome in uh, machinery. That's what we do. Uh, the same holds true for plastic with other aspects. So yes, there are cha uh, challenges. And there's one more. Regulation is uh, developing very dynamic. A regulation that might be in place today might not be valid tomorrow. So how to make an investment decision now in these days? An investment that should carry you over 10 years. So it's very hard to make these decisions. So future proof is one of the major aspects that's driving our development. To make sure our machinery is able to process a wide range of materials without many changes. So our customers um, can relax and be sure that no matter what the regulation brings, they will be able to use the equipment. Excellent. And in terms of our sector specifically, uh, confectionery and bakery and sn snacks markets are you know, a big part of your world in, in terms of the equipment that's developed. So can you talk to me about any of the trends that are coming through with regards to these areas of equipment? Yes, sure. They are <clears throat> very interesting because when you look at the market, and look at the lighthouse project that some big brands have launched, most of them are in confectionery. The Yes Bar has one of the uh, first examples uh, going to the market with a new package example, looking at other examples in the market. It's, um, confectionery is on the forefront. There are certainly reasons for it uh, to drive this, such as littering, such as um, uh, uh, customer perception. So yes, it's important. Secondly, um, what we see uh, um, in the market is uh, when we talk about sustainability, there's a strong demand for paper. Of course, of course with paper, you're on the safe side, no matter what um, the plastic regulation will bring, paper um, can be easily recognized by customers as being sustainable. And um, as a brand, you don't need to care about any taxation. Um, on the other hand, it fulfills um, some other trends we see in the market, which is a uh, natural appearance that helps to um, uh, provide a, uh, or to present the product as being natural, as being healthy, and uh, makes the valuable ingredients to hero ingredients by only providing a package that has a natural touch and feel. So paper we see in bakery and confectionery is one of um, the main trends when it comes to switching to sustainable materials. And our task is to provide um, solutions uh, for these trends. And we can proudly say, uh, we can run a chocolate, chocolate bar in paper without any speed compromises. And we of course can also pack in vertical flow, uh, uh, vertical uh, bags, um, products, even uh, also without any compromises on speed and package quality. That's great indeed. And I think we've been reporting on fairly recently the uh, the use of uh, paper packaging that transition to that 
is that going to make a big difference in the marketplace in your opinion yes it will um of course now everyone is, uh, is uh, switching uh, to paper. So uh, the ones who, of course, approach the market first might have an advantage. In the long run, however, uh, what, we will, what we might see is um, a tendency also in production uh, because um, with traditional conventional materials, uh, the optimization of production could have been different because um, shelf life doesn't matter. Conventional materials provide shelf lives about, uh, over two years, for instance. Now with the new materials, shelf lives might be limited. So the supply chain might be, uh, need to be optimized uh, to um, meet um, the barrier properties of the new materials. And I think this could be a big impact um, to the industry, industry as such, going beyond only switching, uh, only switching material. Sure. I mean, it's something that I've been reporting on in, in recent weeks where companies uh, like Nestle with the, the Smarties have just made a big move going over to paper packaging. So I think it's going to be a really critical area in the months and years ahead. So it's good to know that you're on trend as the, the saying goes in respect to that. And um, obviously this year, sadly, we've not had Interpac, which would have been or would have been coming up at the end of this month. So uh, from a personal perspective, how much of a, I guess, disappointment that you haven't been able to showcase your latest ranges there? Yes, there has been, had been a big disappointment, disappointment, especially last year, because last year all the preparations were done. The machines were physically sitting there ready to be shipped, but no interpack. And we didn't know what to do. What I see right now actually is a change. Um, we have established a series of webinars of digital formats, and we are quite happy to see um, that customers or other business partners like this very, very much. So we have quite a response to the virtual platforms. And uh, we see that we can reach people we would never have reached with, um, um, uh, with an exhibition because these people are not able to travel all the time. So there is also some benefit in, in some virtue in um, having to switch to virtual formats. However, in the end, what we see, our customers want to feel and touch the equipment. They want to see the hardware, they want to touch the hardware, and they want to stand in front of the machine before they make a decision. And this is, of course, a drawback of not being able to exhibit physical machines on an exhi exhibition like in the park. Austin, and uh, just returning to the issue of sustainability itself, um, how much of that as an issue is being driven by the customers, would you say? Are they coming to you saying, we, we really want to see this built into the machinery, or is it sort of coming more from industry, would you say? Um, you, if you say customers like uh, producers, um, we can say there's a big uh, drive or big um, interest of um, producers now asking for solution. And I say purposely asking for solutions. So what we see, um, there's a big interest, but the interest is not formulated in a user requirement specification as we used to see it before. It's more like um, the interest, we want to switch to a more sustainable material. What can we do? So um, the roles have changed a little. And um, that's what I said in the beginning is um, the importance of consulting and giving advice and guidance has, uh, has, has increased. But yes, um, um, the producers, if I say as our customers um, are approaching us a lot, and they are, of course, driven by the end customers, and they are driven by retailers, and um, they are driven by regulations and um, um, other uh, business partners. So the market pressure is very high uh, to put something on the, on, uh, on the market. And on a personal level, uh, can you explain your journey with the business and what has you know, fascinated you about sustainability as, as a subject matter? I always loved packaging. And one of the greatest thing of uh, packaging is uh, you see your files, your products, the, the result of your work on the shelf. But most of the time, uh, uh, most time of my business life, I have spent in plastic. So, and now being able to uh, do both, uh, create a package and do it sustainably um, is one of the best, um, uh, uh, best things I feel every day I go to work. And I feel so happy on a personal level to be able to contribute um, to a environmentally friendly 
uh, solution and be able to do this every day. So it has been of, uh, uh, for me personally as a great enrichment in my personal uh, professional life. Very pleased to hear that. That's great news indeed. And just coming on to my final question there about sustainability for the future. Um, how much of a factor do you believe it will be in the design of your equipment going forward? Um, basically, it's um, now or now it's a, it's an innovation stage. Everything we do is new. Uh, we have the target to uh, um, provide machinery that's able to um, um, uh, to process almost any time of sustainable material. That's what we do now. It's sustainable. At a certain time, um, this will be a given. I believe end customers will not uh, longer accept a non-sustainable solution. So we have to make sure that all of our machinery uh, is able to do this. That's a step one, uh, replacing material. Then, as I said before, one, uh, one of the next steps is being future-proof, being able uh, to um, um, adapt to the trends to come. And moreover, uh, once we have changed the material we see, um, even today already coming up, is the change of packaging itself. So the package style, making one package out of two, reducing the total um, package load, reducing uh, air in the package, uh, thinner materials. These are the next challenges. And we even see tends to change the product itself, to change the product that is more adapted to sustainable packaging solution, that's more adapted to e-commerce with less space, uh, for instance. So there's a lot to do in the future to adapt to the trends. So as I said, uh, to summarize, task ahead is provide solutions for today, moreover prepare for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Excellent, but it sounds as if there is a, a good deal of optimism within the company that uh, despite the tests that are all causing us issues at the moment, there is a, there's some good prospects ahead, would you say? Yeah, definitely. I see, in general, I see a very optimistic view on the industry. Uh, sustainability um, is going to stay, is uh, going to change the industry, the packaging machinery industry, but also the industry of our customers um, in the long run as well. So I believe there's a lot, of, lot to do. There are a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities uh, if you're ready to invest and cut the chances.